our um, sacred text for this morning comes from Romans 5, 3 through 4. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's no one, there's no one like our God. No one. God, I thank you. I ask that your precious Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of us would manifest in our midst this morning as we travel through the sacred text, God. Give us wisdom and understanding, I pray, God. And then add to that knowledge Indeed, come Holy Spirit, come heavenly dove with all of your life-giving power. Touch us, revive us, and renew us for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen? Amen. To understand what Paul is speaking of and talking to the Romans, I thought I should go to one before I jump to three and four. The blessings of justification. You know, we talk about being justified before God, but what are the blessings of being justified before a holy and sacred God through the son of God? Paul puts it like this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I've told you this Greek word before, dikaiu, put right with, justify, vindicate, declare righteous, cause to be in right relation, show to be right, demonstrate something is morally just, to acquit, that means you're found not guilty, remove guilt, clear of transgression, set free, release from the control of, that's the important part, the release from the control of sin, the blessings of justification as we flow to the next slide. This is imperative for the believer to understand what it is to be justified before a holy and sanctified God. The Greek word basically means to change or exchange in the context of relationships between people. Now the term implies a change in attitude on the part of both, not just you, but God. Y'all come with me this morning. The term implies a change in attitude on the part of both individuals, a change from enmity to friendship, enmity to friendship, when used to describe the relationship existing between God and a person, the term implies the change of attitude on part of both a person and God. The need to change the simple ways of human of a human being is being obvious, it's obvious. But some argue that no change is needed on the part of God. So some say when you're justified, God doesn't have to change. But inherent in the doctrine of justification is the changed attitude of God toward the sinner. God declares a person who was formerly God's enemy to be righteous before God. So there is a shift in what God thinks of you and me. In this joy we have in Christ Jesus, this salvation, God thinks differently of us by whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. See, if you're just not standing in that grace, you just jump in it every now and then. I'm telling you, stand in it and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. This is about what does it mean for you to be justified? It's not enough for you just to say, well, I've been justified by God. But what does that mean? We know now that it means God's act toward us changed 
Even sometimes when our, our own attitude hasn't changed toward ourselves, we still go by what people say and said. And we let them drag us back 20, 30 years. God has already changed God's mind about who you are. Change your mind about who you are before this sacred and holy God. A man suffered, bled, and died for this attitude change, not just in us, but in God. Yeshua took his own blood into the Holy of Holies as a sacrifice and poured it on what? The mercy seat. As we go to the next slide, Kenny. See, sometimes we think the blessings of home ownership, car ownership, no, the blessings of being just justified. See, when we start thinking about the good things of God, those things don't mean anything. I would give everything to keep my place in the presence of God. But sometimes we're willing to sacrifice that placing for a moment of joy in this realm or a type of self-righteousness that makes us feel better than somebody else. So the glory that is in Greek, in the Greek word, also means to rejoice. Believers can rejoice, glory, and boast not only in their future hope, but also in their present troubles. See, this is where you know you're with God when sometimes things in this way, it won't make any sense. God is telling you to rejoice in your present troubles. Tribulations refer to physical hardships, suffering, and distress. Perseverance means endurance. Some in America, we can't hardly get through much. You know how I know? Have you seen someone act ugly at a fast food restaurant because the chicken wasn't hot enough or the fries were cold? We can't even endure cold french fries. So how do we act when the hardships of real life come on us and we don't understand? You have to understand this posturing of the blessings of justification means that God in you has given you the strength to endure whatever. Not complain about it, but endure it. My God, Beth Salem, you have heard three right now testimonies within three months. Don't tell me our God isn't all that because God is. Difficult times, such faith produces its own reward. See, when you endure and you're trusting, your faith produces a reward. So now what is faith? Substance, hope. Some of us can be hopeless in certain situations, come to church and just be hopeful. God says, no, when you start recognizing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, to the tip of your toes, that you are the church, you will walk around as manifested endurance. People will come to an understanding of what the blessing of justification is through you because now it has legs, it has arms. Don't let people shortchange you on who you are. You are the power and the light in this present dark age. And it seems crazy to say, not only this, but we also rejoice in suffering. That doesn't make sense. But in the equation of the one who is El El Elyon, it means everything. Jesus sat there suffering, say, hey, take care of my mother. Oh, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. A blessing all the way around, enduring the suffering that we may know this blessing of justification. And we can't endure cold french fries. If God lives in you, begin to act like God lives in you. Begin to posture yourself in a way that people know there's something just a little different. And you don't have to preach the gospel of Beth Salem, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
That's the problem. We want people to start preaching the gospel of their local church so that we fill up a church that has nothing to do with God. Jesus didn't even say, invite me into your heart. Jesus said, follow me. That means you got to get up and move. Jesus said, follow me. This is about the Messiah. It always has been. And the salvation that's already here for people. But we've had shades put on our eyes by the misunderstanding of the sacred text that, that what is there, that's not quite what it means. But it does mean that. That a believer can rejoice in their suffering. Because of the blessing of justification. You can rejoice no matter what you're going through. And then when you wonder why people say, where do you get all that faith? <laughs> I persevered. The blessings of justification, the blessing. Perseverance produces character, something we need more of in the church. The quality of being approved. As believers endure tribulation, God works in them to develop a certain, certain qualities and virtues that will strengthen them and draw them closer to God. The result is fortified hope in God and God's promises. Fortified hope. We live in a hopeless world. Just hopeless. There's a gentleman, he's always showing where people wealthy will show their food closet where they have foods and things that we never could afford. He says, look at this lady. Her outfit, she's bragging about her outfit costing $40,000. I'm fortified in hope. If I had $40,000, I could think of more to do than buy an outfit. <laughs> because if you're fortified in hope, I'm going to put it plain, you shouldn't be stupid in God. And sometimes we walk around and we hear the things that come out of believers' mouths and we go, now wait a minute. I, for, for what God has fortified in me, the hope and the joy that's in God, I don't even care if I ever preach before 50 million people. But for some preachers, that's where they live. They live in the head count and not in the mind and the will and the power of God. Get up and follow God. Not a prescribed way of being. You can never see the glorified presence of God that's already under your feet that are shod with the preparation of the gospel. God was saying, get ready and go, and you're going way off somewhere else that has nothing to do with God. Follow me. That's what Jesus said. Follow me. Follow the way I live, the way I acted around people. And the first people Jesus would diss and dismiss were the priest who has so manipulated the people into thinking church of Jesus Christ isn't successful unless we have a head count. So, there's so much in that that bothers me because our God is so much more. And if we're fortified in these things in God, it doesn't matter. As long as you're walking what God wants you to walk, it may not be your path, but to, to it be a part of one person. One of my mentors talked about being in Africa and how a, a woman preacher came and, and preached and there were seas of people, just seas. And when it came time to take up the offering, the African people bought chickens and stuff. And that American preacher said, God don't want your chickens. Y'all hear me clearly. Millions have been wounded by our inability to understand the sacred text and what it means to walk in the blessings of being justified before a holy God. But some of those people, that was all that they had. She said God wanted their money. God does not need the filth of American money or European money. 
doesn't need it. Yeshua did not do all that for us to have money. Ooh, Lord. See, I'm fortified in that hope that springs eternal, that comes from a realm that's not touched by the hands in this world. We are the people of God. Should we not be a good example of what it is to be uh, justified and share the blessings? I've gone through the fire. I've gone through the pain. I don't know what else God can do. God has been showing us example after example, and we still make it about something that has nothing to do with God. You wonder why people are hopeless? Believers have got to get it right. We can bring the hope that hopeless people are looking for just by our justified selves. But because we refuse to walk in that posture of, of, of divine knowledge that God has given us in sacred text, we walk around with a pre-prescribed way of doing stuff when God is like, no, 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 baby, follow my lead. Do you know the last thing I do when I'm talking with someone and I feel God is having me minister to them? The last thing I do is invite them to best sale. The first thing I do is invite them to God. Come on, y'all. We got to get this right. Sometimes we're so busy inviting people to our church and to our revival and to the, we haven't even invited them to God. And tell them about the things you know in God and, and the things God does in your life and has brought you through. And I know some of my colleagues say, you got to talk yourself right out of a job. Good. God be glorified. I would prefer God to be glorified than to stand and preach the pre-prescribed things and fill up seats and do things that make no difference to God in this realm when people are hurting and suffering. See, the blessings of justification means that you can see other people suffering and then you're willing to do something about it. What have you endured? And did it produce character? I've seen some people endure with no thoughts of God on their mind and it produces horrible things. It's important that we know this justification because we don't need any more production of mean, ugly people willing to kill and steal and lie. We don't need any more of it. And until the people who call themselves by the name of the Most High God in Yeshua get lined up, we're going to have an issue, this justification and being who we are. And it won't make you popular. Because God will get you to tell the truth and the truth makes people angry. People walking around big and large because they got diamonds on their neck. People walking around big and large and think they're all that because they driving a Mercedes or driving a Tesla. It doesn't matter. I can get in my expedition and be the blessing that I am wherever I am. It does not matter what I drive. It does not matter. Because if you're living in fortified hope, those things don't matter. Hope does not put us to shame. See, I'm hopeful in God. Try to put me to shame. Girl, did you know your hair was sticking up? I don't care. Your clothes, I don't care. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Hope doesn't put you to shame. When you have that hope in Christ Jesus, was Jesus ashamed that they said, oh, this brother only had one outfit? They cast like they gambled to see who would win his clothes. You wouldn't even think that, would you? Because he'd been walking in them for years. See, I have told you this before. It's not my job to wake up the sheep. It's time for the lions to wake up. It's time for those people who, to understand who they are in Christ Jesus. No more mealy mouth uh, Christian that, you know, we got to have a certain number. No, we're not going to play that game. The lions wake up 
and roar and the whole forest said, wait a minute, they coming this way? Gentlemen, they run. And he ran up on, uh, I think it was a mountain lion and her cubs. Man, that brother was walking backwards with his camera. I thought he was going to fall. Because he walked backwards for almost 10 minutes. And she was coming at him. If you understand what I'm getting at, when you're in Christ Jesus, and you're and a lion that's awake, a sucker back up off of you too. It'll just roll right on back. Even while it's watching you, it will leave you. But these foundational truths, we can no longer afford to get them wrong and walk wrong in them. In the Presbyterian faith, justification is a big thing. And I just see people that won't walk in that. I just see people who want to sit and say, well, we got to have this or we need. I just see people not understanding what it is to endure. Some pastors lose their mind after the first year. We're going into our 11th year. The justification and sustaining power of God in me is not just in me, it's in you. We've all been together all these years. It's time that we wake up all the lions in Columbus, not just some of them. And yeah, they don't have to come to Best Salem, but guess what? They might be down at another church and things are going on. All of a sudden they go, Ugh. they're like, hey, what's that? The lion is awake. It's a blessing to be justified before God. It's a blessing to know that God changed God's mind about you. Oh, Lord. I have just heard some things that troubled me deep in my spirit, in church and community, troubled me deeply. And I, I'm not a mind changer. God is. And I know the presbytery feels, I feel it too. It's a, it's a wound I can't explain. And it's kind of like that thorn that, that, that Paul had. It's one that, that spirit of rejection that I am acquainted with. I felt that. When rejection comes, there's, you can't talk to it. You can't reason with it. It's a hard thing. But I am hopeful. I am so hopeful, even in the light of, of seeing that, that the people of God will awaken not just roll from one place to the other. Oh, it's what the people are doing. Let's be a different example in this realm. Let's be a different example of who God is in this realm. I'm not trying to please uh, Kojic. I'm not trying to please the Baptist. I'm not trying to please the Presbyterian. I'm not trying to please the AME. I'm trying to please God. And until we get to where we're trying to please God and those things don't matter, you will be a better Presbyterian. You will be a better Baptist. Everything in me is fighting for people to just grasp on to God. Just God. It doesn't have to be anything but God. And then awaken to the power of who you are. The gospel is in your feet. So God means for you to move. There's no excuse. Because I'm not the only person God is raising up to tell these things. We can no longer go through, uh, we had good praise and worship and I ran the aisles, fell out for 10. We can no longer go through that when we see the suffering that's happening in this world. 
We feel satisfied when Johnson & Johnson says, well, we're donating $100 million to feed the hungry. Really? Have you not noticed that those that have been out doing the hard work of getting food to those that have food insecurities, that now you have big companies and football players and basketball players, they all have a foundation. Don't dare dumb down the work of God. And those who are doing that work, keep doing it. Let them look dumb. You're not the one looking dumb. They're doing it for a totally different reason. They passed by those people for years and did nothing. May God strengthen us in all, and may we all, God, this, this night, let people sit and ponder the blessings of justification and look at what they've endured and all the things they've been through and the hope-filled lives that they have. In the name of Jesus.